So for this video, I wanted to show you GitHub and kind of onboard you. It's not strictly a step-by-step -step tutorial because there's a lot of really good information out there on the web already, but just to walk you through how you could use GitHub to uh, set up and host your portfolio for the class and, and more generally as a sort of professional portfolio of your work as a coder. All right, so on my screen, I'm showing you uh, my sort of GitHub homepage. So I've got a GitHub account. I created a GitHub account. You can do that too. It's free. When I log in, this is what I see. So over on the left, I've got various repositories that I'm working on. You can see a lot of these are Dell Psych Neuro, so I've also got a, a separate Dell Psych Neuro organization, uh, sort of a, an area in the middle with recent activity and other activities, so you can you know subscribe and watch other people's GitHub repos. Uh, up in the top right, I can change my account settings, all that good stuff. <clears throat> so when you create a GitHub account, the first thing you're going to want to do is uh, customize your account and just set up your profile. So when I click on my little icon up here in the top right, you can see my profile. So I can go to that. This is a public profile. So you want to set that up because you want your, your portfolio to look professional and really sort of showcase yourself, right? So you should have a, a decent headshot or, you know, in the developer coding world, it's also cool to have some sort of funny uh, avatar sort of thing. So it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a, a, an actual professional headshot like you might see on LinkedIn. Uh, but that's the option I went for. Got my name, my account number, or my account name, my GitHub account name. A uh, little blurb about me, where I am, personal website, all that good stuff. You can see that GitHub tracks all of my activity on GitHub, so all the commits and the activity that uh, I've engaged in, which has really just been since April uh, when I created this account, and uh, more of a details history. Uh, so the main thing is you want to go on and you want to actually set up just your basic personal information and photos so it looks like a legit uh, professionally sort of thought through uh, sort of thing. All right. What next? Well, I can click on my repos tab and see the repos that I have. Mostly these are just kind of crap that I created. <clears throat> Mostly these are just crap that I created when I was playing around because all of the stuff I've done for the course has been through the Dell Psych Neuro account. But you can see there's a big green button here that says new. So let's click new and create a new repo. All right, it says create a new repository. You'll see this is going to be under my account name. So when you create it, it's going to be github.com slash your account name slash your repository name. Uh, so I'm going to call this portfolio. So that seems sort of clear and, and uh, transparent. Um, my professional coding portfolio. All right. You can make it public or private. Uh, the whole point of this is a public display of your work, right? So let's keep it public. Uh, you know, realistically, unless you send somebody the URL, probably nobody's going to find it anyway. Web's a big place. Uh, you do want to initialize this repository with a readme. That's going to create the readme.md markdown file that appears at the bottom uh, when anybody goes to your repo. Um, so that's useful to have. There's a couple of other options. Uh, you can ignore the git ignore and probably ignore the license. If you, know, if you want to, you can automatically add uh, some sort of open source kind of license. Um, if you, if you know what you're doing, uh, you can do that, but it's probably not a good idea to arbitrarily pick a license if you don't know what you're actually committing to there. All right, so very simply, I just give it a name. It's public. Initialize with a readme. Create repo. We wait, and there we go. It's a repo. And normally you'd edit your files uh, on your own computer and push them to GitHub. But for quick and dirty purposes, you actually can edit files, uh, at least text files, directly on GitHub. So you can see my readme.md file here. It's been initialized with the name of my repo, and there's a little pencil icon here. So if I click that, that actually opens up this Markdown file. Uh, hashtags in Markdown indicate titles, so I'm going to change that to Aaron J. Newman's Portfolio. And it got this from the My Professional Coding Portfolio is what I added as the description for the repo. And I can add more. Hi and welcome to my portfolio. 
questions. Email me at, and then I'm going to use a little bit of markdown here, which is like this, Aaron Newman Dell.ca. So square brackets contain the text that's going to be shown for a link, and then round brackets I'm going to say mail to colon Aaron.NewmanDell.ca. All right. And now that I'm done, there's no simple save button because this is GitHub, and the way that we do things is we commit. Uh, you can't be afraid of commitment if you're using GitHub. So the commit changes, so it's an update to readme.md, that's already given. Um, but if I want to add more of a detailed commit message, um, added some personal info. And I can either commit directly to the master branch or create a new branch. Uh, if you don't know what branching is, see my first video on the introduction to GitHub. Uh, in general, if you're the only one working on your repo and you're not doing anything crazy, especially like something like this, like a portfolio, just work on the master branch. So I'm going to commit changes. And there we go. You can see those changes. And up here, if I click on the URL tab, you can see that um, the whole URL there is github.com slash my username slash portfolio. And then there's some other stuff. But if I were to just go like that, that'll take me here. And so that's how you can share your repo with other people. All right, so that's how you set up a simple repo. And after that, you can add files. Um, you can create new files or upload files. So you can add uh, Jupyter Notebooks or Markdown files that you've created in this class uh, to your uh, profile here, your portfolio. Um, and I think that's where I'll wrap it up for now, and we'll come back again for more details later.